Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. And today we're going to tackle a new project. It's an old preparation, it's a class 2 composite, but we're, we're going to utilize one of these carious teeth from Acadental. This will be the first time I've actually worked on this tooth. You can see they come in different teeth and surfaces. I imagine they're probably going to try to include these in board exams in the future. You can see the caries on the proximal there. I really have no idea what I'm in for here, so um, we're going to start with a 330, as we normally would, with a little punch cut to 1.5 millimeters. The material is hard. Uh, it takes a few attempts to get down through it into the softer dentin underneath, which is quite soft. So the difference between the shell of enamel and the dentin underneath is significant. Um, I don't think it's a problem. I just think you need to get used to it. See how I'm almost hesitating as the burr is moving through here? And it's because it's quite a bit harder than uh, the typical tooth made by any of the type knot manufacturers. And certainly more uh, rigid, uh, harder substance uh, than the typical academal tooth. So let's take a look at uh, what the caries looks like from the occlusal. Uh, this is pretty good. I think if you're in dental school, and you want to know what a tooth could look like when you break into the uh, caries, this is very much what I would expect to see, certainly clinically. So we're going to continue now by dropping the box of the 245. You know, you have plenty of room, so you don't have to move the bird too close to the premolar. The enamel substitute material they're using is somewhat brittle, uh, like enamel, and uh, it's quite a bit harder, which is really good. Now, I'm not showing you a lot here because of the Hampy's head, but essentially what I'm doing is what I've done in many other videos, just uh, deepen the axial and refine the internal line angles as best you can with the 245 always trying to seek that gingival clearance that's the critical part about the box avoid the adjacent tooth and seek gingival clearance so a little bit more with the 245 so we can break contact and this video is going to show you two different approaches for the class two. One is to just barely break contact, which is what I would typically do clinically. However, on many of the board examinations, they want you to break the contact uh, significantly more than that. So here I'm doing the little Sturdivant chip where I'm knocking off the gingival lip of undermined enamel. And then with the 10714 again, uh, starting to get a little bit more extension on the facial lingual. And like I said, this is the very, very first time uh, I've worked on this tooth structure that uh, is made by Acadental. Uh, about this time in the procedure, I was starting to get used to it. And I think that it's probably going to be something that you want to practice on uh, before you really become familiar with the textures you're dealing with. So once again we're using the 245 to extend a little bit more facial and undermine the enamel so that we can use the hand instrument to chip it away. The undermine and chip technique to improve your extension or increase your extension. Now, of course, the 10714 hatchet is being used again to remove the undermine enamel that you created.
Just a little bit of close-up showing the action of the sharp enamel hatchet working down this material. I like the fact that it uh, doesn't just crumble on you, that it actually kind of cleaves off quite a bit like enamel. So back to uh, refinement, this is the RGS 330 burr, which is specially designed to enhance the internal smoothness and the outline form of all class two, class one preparations. And we're just using this here to create a little bit of a smoother outline form. Once again, we have not yet concerned ourselves with the axial carries and the pulpal carries at that axial pulpal line angle. But gosh, that looks so realistic to me. It's pretty nice. So we have choices of burrs, round burrs. I like the uh, the largest burr I can fit. and So I usually start with either the four, the six, or the eight. And there's the four round burr. It fits easily. Let's see if we can go a little larger. Six round burr. Yeah, it fits, but it's a little bit tight. I'd be a little concerned about using that burr. And then, of course, if you go up the eight round burr, there's no chance. So I think that we've found the right burr, the four round. And of course, now we're using slow speed. And I like using a friction grip attachment. So in private practice, this would be it. I'd be finished. Uh, the extensions are just enough to break contact. Um, and we we have a preparation that's not too deep axially. It is not like an amalgam. It's kind of a concave look. But I would go ahead and place my composite at this point. But I want to take this preparation to a little bit closer to a board exam where they're asking for at least 0.5 millimeters of space between your outline form and the adjacent tooth. Some people like to place a base on the axial wall too to, to build it back, so I went ahead and did that. And I just used a flowable composite for this. I don't think it's uh, necessary. But it, and then I increased the uh, outline form as, as well. And here I'm using the gingival Martin trimmer to create a little bit of a bevel on the gingival and uh, improve the uh, bond of the uh, adhesive agents to the enamel. And you notice that the preparation outline is decidedly flared, which would never be allowed for an amalgam, but is quite ideal for a composite preparation. So thanks for spending this time with me. It was kind of fun working on these new teeth. Take care. Mm -hmm.